Coming up, the Nova 2 pre-order is live. I get a new chef's knife for my wife and 10 really cool knives I should carry more often. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past holiday week was from Stuart Rowling's 602. Or is it Stuart Trolling's 602? You tell me. No, Stuart says, Howdy, Bob, and belated but still wonderful 4th of July weekend and birthday of our great country, where blades, barbecue, and bourbon may be enjoyed with our guns and our freedom. Five of my favorite seven or eight things right there. So uh, I love this comment. Uh, very. Very uplifting and positive comment. I got an, a bunch of comments this past week about how I mispronounced B O W I E. And I'm like, man, I, I know, like, I know that, that they're late to that argument, but uh, now I'm just, I'm just letting it come out of my mouth, however it does. So I love these kind of positive comments. Uh, thank you so much, Stuart. All right. That being said, let us now get to a pocket check. Let's get to a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. In my front right pocket today, I had the venerable and long loved by me, Emerson Sachs. Uh, I remember seeing a short video that Ernest Emerson put up on the um, Emerson website, or not the Emerson website, sorry, the Emerson IG page years ago. And it showed him grinding a mysterious blade. Can anyone identify what this is going to be? And I saw it right away. And I said, it's a sax. And uh, lo and behold, it was a sax. I knew it would be because of the shape, A, and B, that he would call it such and not a Warncliffe uh, because, well, he's kind of a Viking and he has a collection of Viking stuff and that's where his people come from. So uh, Emerson Sachs is right up there in my top three Emersons of all time. This is probably the most, my most consistently carried Emerson, I'd say. But I love this knife. Uh, and I had a chance to check out the mini version from Jock, uh, Jock's Knife, sent it uh, to him through me. And that was a cool, I, they really size down the Emerson knives very well. If if you're more into a three-inch knife than a four-inch knife, you'll, you'll dig it. Uh, I should say bladed knife. Uh, this one, of course, carrying the the what is that? It's not a Lynch clip. It's a and it's not a DCC clip. What is it, people? What kind of clip do I put on that? MXG gear clip uh, works pretty well. The only thing is those giant button screws and all that. But you know, you you can't help but have <clears throat> can't help but have the clip sitting on top of the scale for an aftermarket. Clip. Let me turn this down here. It's blinding with that satin finish. So beautiful. So beautiful. All right. Next up, speaking of beautiful, I had the mini cyborg jack in my pocket today from Jack Wolf Knives. I've been carrying the fixed, the midnight fixed EDC a lot. Kind of wanted to get back into a slip joint today. So I went back to the one I was enjoying so much before the uh, fixed blade showed up. So yeah, this little mini cyborg is a, just a great knife, perfectly sized right there in that boy's knife size and a great blade. That great, uh, that blade is awesome. It's like half Tonto, half clip point. I'm sure Ben would, uh, would take exception to the, the, the Tonto. Uh, but if I look at it and just kind of squint a little, that's what it looks like to me. And you get a lot of the benefits because of that, that forward portion, uh, forward to the belly kind of is sort of, uh, straight, you know, from the tip to the belly. So you can use that in small kind of tasks like that. Have I? No, I'm not scraping anything with this knife uh, unless it's, uh, you know, the crust off of a burnt baguette or something like that. So, uh, but I love this knife. It uh, lives permanently in its little sheath because I, at first I was like, I can't wait to get snail trails on this beautiful blasted titanium. And uh, I've gone out of my way not to, um, and I think I will continue to. I'm, I'm keeping all my Jack Wolf's pristine, pretty much. Uh, okay, uh, next up, 
on my belt, no stranger to you, uh, is the Agent 001 from TKL Knives. Uh, this is the purple handled one, purple burl handled one that I got, um, you know, specially. Uh, Tim asked what color handle I wanted. I wanted the purple. He sent me this one and a couple of others, but I love that purple swirl or burl, I should call it g10 burl they have is really nice because it mixes blends of various colors but instead of having it striated on different levels it's all blend it's every level has different blended uh, patterns of it so when you sand it and shape it you get this beautiful swirly pattern uh, but anyway the blade itself has just proven to be um and i'm not tooting my own horn because i didn't make it i did uh, uh, co-design it with with tim kell but he has just created an awesome knife and part and parcel to an awesome fixed blade knife is an awesome sheath and this one is a it's a home run like all the other sheaths except i do have a little bit of retention issue with my fln i think i'm going to heat it up and make it a little more retentive if you will uh but on the whole every uh, besides that fln which is a tricky blade to sheath um but every Tim Kell or T Kell knives sheath I've had has been perfect. Pops off, has this awesome jimping right here for that thumb ramp. Um, so just an outstanding knife and proud to be a part of it. Okay, uh, next up I had this. The uh, my emotional support knife, my ESK today was the Banjara designed by Dirk Pinkerton. This is an artisan, a new artisan cutlery release. Um, you've got 20 cv steel i believe oh no no sorry s 90 v steel titanium frame um nice milling in the frame really nice ergonomics on this and a beautiful upswept blade but it 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 uh, the whole blade kind of faces downward so that that upswept tip is not rising above the thumb ramp it's still below where your thumb rests so you get the benefits of that sweep and that belly uh, which are shearing power, uh, slicing power, et cetera, slashing, if you're doing something like that. Uh, but you also have the benefits of having the point not above the spine of the blade. So it's easier to index and it's easier to find where that tip is without having to do weird you know, cantings to your wrist. This one, I believe, is a prototype. It's totally unmarked, uh, sent to me by Dirk to check out. And I've been really digging it. This is one of the few knives on loan I've been carrying. Um, oftentimes, knives on loan just end up living on a certain shelf and and being appreciated and taken out for the shows and stuff like that, but not carried. This one I've just been carrying because it's it's really nice, and I like it. <laughs> what can I say? It's a nice knife to carry. It's also a really nice knife to have in hand. I already mentioned the ergonomics, but just looking at it, I want to mention it again. It's very comfortable in hand. And this this right here, I love the way this pommel is uh, designed. It's perfect for running your thumb up and then and then hooking it over the back if you needed to use this uh, to, to plunge into a 55-gallon oil drum full of Uzis at the border. All right, this is what I had on me today. What did you have on you? Drop it in the comments below and give me some inspiration. Uh, this is the Emerson Sachs. Love that knife. Uh, the mini cyborg jack. The Agent 001 by TKL Knives and yours truly. And the Banjara by Dirk Pinkerton and Artisan Cutlery. Love these knives. Love them all. I wish I could carry more. Uh, at once we have some viewers of Thursday Night Knives who carry, just as a matter of course, 10 knives at a time. And uh, I applaud you. Can't do that myself, but I applaud you. All right, next up. You've seen the Nova 2 over the past two months, but it is now live. The pre-order is now live for this knife. Uh, we have made a couple of changes, but only to the sheath. We are going with a large discrete carry concepts clip that accepts that can loop over a belt. That's just been my personal preference lately. Uh, when we uh, put this one together, <clears throat> pardon me. When we put this one together, as I was saying, uh, we used, uh, my preference was this small clip. I used to just like to clip it to the pants and then put the belt over it. Now I like to go over the belt when possible. Uh, so, and if you don't like going over the belt and you want to keep it as discreet as possible, the long clip works well to go down 
below that seam that come you know that that rests behind your belt um and then also we're just changing the color the sheath is awesome he makes great sheaths we are changing the color to a dark charcoal gray here's the knife itself speaking of gray i'm going to put it on this little gray background and see if it doesn't um help uh see the color of it because it always just comes out white let's see and nothing wrong with white, but this is more ivory. So it's it's kind of an off-white. It sort of looks antique in person. It's kind of hard for me to bring across on this camera. Now, uh, you'll be able to see a long-form vi close-up video of this uh, on my, on my uh, close-up background, and you can see the colors much better. Uh, but here you go. Uh, that's 154 cm, deeply hollow ground. Uh, and we're, we're talking about a kiridashi blade that runs three and three quarters inches <laughs> i had to measure it uh three and three quarters inches it's the perfect size knife uh you've got a handle that has full four finger grip not just for me and my um what, what do we want to call it surgeon like hands delicate hands uh but for uh well, matt chase who's got massive mitts uh this fits him perfectly too so this is just a great size and very comfortable. This is part of why we started the uh, Nova series in the first place. The Nova series started as um, as Hogtooth Knives EDC Tonto, which I bought and loved and carried all the time. Hey, can we put a couple of different blades on here and call it a series? Sure, let's do it. Uh, so Nova, uh, the series number one was the was the recurve buoy. Here we have this uh, this Kiridashi. And why did I start saying all that? Oh, each one is a unique build in and of itself. The Bowie, of course, has the, the maroon and the uh, colored uh, polished micarta handle with the green liner. This has uh, the ivory with the red liner and the uh, dark acid wash blade. And this thing is so incredibly sharp. Um, it's just a... A great great knife i'm so excited about it and darn it i should have pulled out the nova one to show you uh with it together the nova one is slightly smaller in blade length um needed just a little bit more uh, it's about a quarter inch longer this one and needed a little bit more length to fully express uh the lines here in that forward angle i wanted i wanted this to have that upward sweep of the blade towards the tip i wanted a center line tip and i wanted a uh, a somewhat extreme angle at the tip. And I was at first looking at knives like the the, uh, the Yojimbo and the Contact and the Warney, um, XM Warney. Uh, but I laid it back even a little bit more than the XM Warney just to have a, uh, just a more acute point. I do love an acute point. So uh, that point is great for all sorts of utility and detail uh, work, but that long upward uh, angled straight edge is great for everything else. So a great defensive blade, a great, uh, uh, what do you call it? Utility blade. Nova 2. Very excited. Just go to uh, uh, store.thenifejunkie.com. Store.thenifejunkie.com. And that'll bring you to this and other stuff. Oh, wait, let me show you real quick. Uh, he's now doing laser engraving. So we have the uh, his own laser engraving, I should say. So the Hogtooth Knives logo on that side and the uh, Knife Junkie logo there right next to it. Prototype, there it will have your number because these will all be numbered. And they will never come out again the same way. Um, so who knows what the future may hold. That's the Nova 2 pre-order. It is live at store dot the knife junkie dot com uh, next up another beautiful custom knife this one by brent smith of bald man knife and tool this is the thick atross a, a quarter inch thick uh fat version of the albatross his i think his second i guess it's his second most popular uh knife it's a drop point utility knife so nice this thing is robust as hell and it really comes to a thin behind the edge it's like a wedge it really it really gets really thin back here it it's a quarter inch thick but it cuts like a much uh thinner blade so you get the benefit of a knife that's definitely not going to break that you can definitely do a lot of hard work with but also that um 
slicing and cutting power of a thinner knife. It has this Gripatrex or whatever it's called. It's <laughs> that's my name for it. Uh, G10 layered with uh, a very mild rubber so that when it's uh, milled into, it reveals some of the rubber and you get a real nice grip. It feels it it feels soft, but not uh, not in a way like you can compress it. It feels just soft the way kind of micarta feels soft, uh, but it's got a grippiness to it. Magna Cut blade steel at 63 to 64. And uh, we're going to be giving this away on July 18th. And uh, hopefully Brent Smith will be here on Thursday Night Knives with us to help us give it away. I know he's keen on the idea. Let's just say that. So if you want to become a gentleman junkie, that's uh, our Patreon, uh, highest level of, of Patreon. Uh, you can do that. And this is the kind of thing you can win. Um, this this is a special month, I have to say, having a custom knife to give away and very excited about that. So uh, do be sure to, well, take a look into it anyway. All right. Uh, lastly here, I just I had a hell of a weekend uh, doing cleanup in the backyard. Uh, we've had uh, May, Sember. I've heard it said uh, May is extremely busy, especially uh, especially with kids in school and stuff like that. And then it, it bled into June and there was never a weekend to hunker down. Well, this past weekend was the weekend to hunker down and throw my daughter's 14th birthday party, which was a different, a different story altogether, but also uh, to clean the backyard and, uh, and power wash the patio and do all that kind of stuff. Well, uh, not only was I successful in doing a lot of what I set out to do, not all, uh, but I got attacked, man. Mother Nature was getting used to my backyard and having it all to herself. I got stung on the leg uh, twice by these little bastard yellow jackets who I swear, man, uh, I stepped on one just three days ago because I like to walk barefoot to outside and, and I stepped on one. So that's three bee stings in a week. Now that I think about it, the one they itch like hell when they're done hurting like hell, they itch like hell. Anyway, I had three knives on me and, uh, and a power washer in hand. And I was, I was taking care of the bees. Uh, not with the knives, of course. First on me, uh, these are knives that I haven't carried in a long time, but it was great to have uh, on me. On my belt, I had the Buck 110, which I am so good at pulling out. And then when I put it back in, redrawing it just like this and snapping it, it's easier when it's on my hip. But you can just do it all in one motion. I love the beautiful leather sheaths that come with the 110 and the 112. Uh, this was just a Walmart purchase years ago. And now they, now they don't really have in in my Walmart anything worth buying. Uh, but this is a really nice one with that diamond wood handle and that heavy construction. That brass and wood construction is just man, it is a boat anchor. Uh, that's why you have to carry it. You have to carry it in one of these. Uh, I had, uh, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago. I I made a oh, it's right here. I made a sheath for my Buck 110. Now I have a little uh, G10 knife in there, but this was so I could drop it in the pocket without having it move around. But even though it accomplished that task and it didn't move around, uh, man, it sure did weigh my my pants down. Uh, this was fun. It just felt good to pull this out to cut vines or cut whatever I had to cut. There was a lot of uh, tangled crap. I ended up using this for some of it because it's a thin blade and could slip into into places. The other ones I'll show you uh, maybe took a little more doing. It was hot and slippery, and I, I can't say I was in 100% in the best mind frame, uh, but anyway, so you got to got to choose your tools carefully. 420, is that right? 420 HC with the Bose heat treat. That, this one does not have the Bose heat treat. Who knows what this is? Yeah, this is uh, 440, no, 420 420. We're just going to leave it right there. Uh, very much liked having this on my belt. I, I do have the uh, the 112 uh, that I need to start carrying too. I mean, I have so many knives to say need to start carrying. It's not that that means carrying it once, like to be honest. Uh, next, I had the Cold Steel Vaquero Grande. This is one I've definitely carried more than once. Uh, this this I've had for over 20 years. It has to be. Um, I used to carry this on my person in New York City, which now just scares the hell out of me. I could, I could be doing this podcast from Rikers Island if I was ever busted uh, carrying this. It's so big and menacing. But uh, maybe you know, 
maybe the fact that it is so unlikely is what uh, gave me the confidence to carry it. Also that and being young and stupid. But this, as it turns out, uh, never was used in a street battle, thank the heavens, but it, it's been used many, many a time in a backyard battle <clears throat> against vines and other we got the grapevine. We got the creeping Virginia. Oh, Virginia creeper. We got some other nasty thing. And oh, uh, uh, English ivy. It's just very aggressive. Uh, the third knife I had on me, I've been loving this for work. I know it's a tactical knife, but I've been loving this one for work. This is the TKL uh, TKL knives Agent 002, and this is a prototype that uh, Tim gave me at Blade Show. Hey, just take it. Check it out use it and that's what i've been doing that's not what he sounds like but uh i've been using it and using it and we used it uh this big pool installation of flooring i told you about a couple weeks back it worked great as a hammer this this back thumb uh, thumb ramp for your thumb pommel here is great as a improvised percussive device i used it to hammer a lot of uh, uh tabs into notches if you will <clears throat> and then that worn clip blade is just uh a nasty uh, straight edge, you know, it, that point will get you into whatever you need to get into. But that long straight edge, it's not that long, but that straight edge will really, you know, just cut beautifully. It's nickel boron coated. And we all know why straight edges cut nicely. And right now I'm thinking about all the cardboard I've cut up with this so far. Um, and I have to say, um, the nickel boron coating is not just a, a cool thing to do. Uh, to separate his knives, TKL knives from other knives. Uh, others use it, uh, I think, uh, but he uses it on all of his knives. And yes, it really does improve how how a blade slips through a medium. You know, I guess that's why they use it on machine gun parts. All right, so this is what I had on on this past weekend to battle the um, to battle the backyard. I didn't even have a fixed blade on me. Uh, usually, I have some. A fixed blade so that it's available uh, I don't know, this is a fixed blade but i mean like a long dangling sort of buoy or something i uh, didn't do that because it was so hot and i didn't want my pants and my shorts to get pulled down from that so there you go all right well as you know i mentioned the uh, thick atroce i just want to remind you how you get this you 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 get this uh by becoming a patron so go to the knifejunkie.com slash patreon to check out uh how to sign up you can jump on the QR code here or just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon and read it about it there. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the new Bark River Quaken is a limited run that features durable Mikata scales and a blade of CPM S35VN stainless steel. The SE Izula signature model is perfectly sized for EDC or stowing in a survival pack. It's made in the USA, and this special edition features the signatures of SE's founders. And the RMJ Tactical Wee Zerka, the little brother to the Berserker, is inspired by a 9th century Viking axe and adapted to a convenient size to use as a camp axe. The Weezerka's curved handle and 5-inch cutting edge make it a powerful, balanced cutting tool, and it's made in Tennessee. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. Theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Well, several weeks after Blade Show, pickings are slim for new knives. Obviously, that's when a lot of them drop. And then a couple dribble out afterward. And here are a few. That's <laughs> uh, not very appealing. But these are appealing knives, especially this first one for me. The Rosecraft Blades French Broad Jack is back. I remember when they canceled it or put it in mothballs. I thought, oh, no, I better get this. And I ended up getting one. A bit of a lemon, I must say, compared to my other uh, uh rosecraft blades only in terms of fit and finish of the bone anyway the original french broad jack was in that beautiful cherry bone they are bringing that beauty back with rosewood uh, a very fitting wood rosewood right but it's also a very beautiful wood uh, frequently used on the fretboards of guitars um, i love rosewood i have one other rosewood knife and i don't remember which one it is now i, I think i think it may be a finch 
Uh, but anyway, that's a three inch long D2 Warren Cliff. This is a really great blade uh, for, you know, uh, you know, if you're really actually carrying your pocket knives to to do light work to do, but consistent, this is a great one. Um, it's got that true Warren Cliff blade. So a kind of a continuous curve from the from the spine to the tip. Nice. Uh, three inch straight edge or it's like 2.75 inch straight edge and then that uh, serpentine handle just fits in the hand so nice it this reminds me a lot of the number 38 gec uh, which is an, another great one uh, great walk and talk on these uh, i can say because i have one and i was able to check out the new wood uh, french broad jacks and other oh god look at that thank you jim that is a beautiful shot of that rosewood. I was able to check out all these new wood and stag versions of the Rosecraft blades at Blade Show. And it's impressive because, you know, we've talked a lot with uh, Ben Belkin about the uh, some of the dangers or risks of natural materials, using natural cover materials on knives that are manufactured in China or, or in places that have vastly different, uh, say, humidity levels and temperatures. And then they're going through different pressures and stuff getting here so it can oftentimes lead to or i guess it's it, that's the risk it can lead to the wood contracting or expanding and it becoming a you know a debacle but i guess the way they stabilize wood these days it's it's easier to do and here's proof of it it's it's just beautiful beautiful knife with beautiful handle these are available now uh, next up another uh slip joint this one not for me personally but uh, there are a lot of buck collectors out there who love this knife. This is the Saunter. Uh, this was from their 2022 Legacy Collection. And then they just announced in 2023, they announced that they would bring this into regular production, which they did. And it's, well, it's called the Saunter, as I mentioned. Uh, a traditional style slip joint, but modernized here in its July 2024 Buck of the Month incarnation. So you have uh, a custom red, white, and blue camo carbon camo carbon and i gotta say camo carbon by the way is a company that makes special carbon fiber and if you look at it which we are doing right now if you're watching this on youtube it looks like fireworks so a very patriotic uh, set of covers here on this uh buck of the month saunter but also you look it says buck and then the anvil in usa red white and blue on the blade so they're they're uh, they're not hiding the ball here. This is definitely a patriotic model, and uh, I could see people uh, flock into this. Uh, it's 154 cm, uh, so same as usual. The only thing they've really changed to make this the buck of the month is this uh, custom red, white, and blue camo carbon that they had made, and uh, the the window dressing, if you will. So there it is, buck of the month saunter slip joint. Uh, next up, artisan. Uh, they came up earlier with the Banjara. I love Artisan Cutlery. I love their collaborations, and I love their in-house designs. Great builds, uh, and by that I mean fit and finish. They're just great knives uh, that you can afford. And then CJRB, their sister company, makes it even more affordable. Well, this latest one is from Artisan, uh, the Artisan Prime. It's a collaboration with a young knife maker um, uh, named Jonathan Shaw. And if the name sounds familiar, it's because he's the guy who was behind uh, last year's um boa you remember that the boa it came in four different versions uh and that was a collaboration with his knife company triple star uh this is just he's just coming out with this as a collaboration with himself jonathan shaw so uh this thing is definitely a working folder you've got a nice big sheep's foot uh blade with a belly and a little notch on top maybe to put your thumb or finger in and that is S90V. S90V, I have learned, is an awesome blade steel, uh, thanks to Jack Wolf Knives. I think those are the only S90V blades I have. But uh, since getting S90V on these, I've I've begun to use them harder, quote unquote, which probably is not that bad. But uh, it takes a lot to dull S90V, and so what a great blade to put on this because you know this is a classy work knife if you will uh, it is a titanium frame lock and everything is contoured the the uh, the micarta side or and the titanium side both milled and contoured and actually the titanium side has a ripple pattern milled into it and a pretty nice looking clip i gotta say um so definitely one of artisan's uh, top tier 
Productions here. 3.25 ounces, and this sucker is available now. All right, last up in Knife Life news, I just want to remind everyone that uh, the Knife Rights Ultimate Steel uh, donation drive is happening right now. And the Ultimate Steel is pretty damn awesome, I got to say, because uh, there are different ways to get knives uh, from them for donating. So, you know, uh, you don't get... You don't just get new knife rights when you donate here. Uh, you get stuff like here. If you donate 100 bucks, you get this uh, Rewriting Knife Law in America Power Access Deluxe Multi-Tool. And then as you scroll down, uh, as you give more money, you get uh, different kind of knives like this, which is all gone. Uh, the Spyderco uh, PM3. Uh, here you got the um, that cool SE. And keep going down and you see this. For 400 bucks, you get this knife. Uh, so you get the idea. But another really cool aspect about this is that if, uh, Jim, if you keep scrolling down, we'll start seeing all of these custom knives. We'll see firearms. We'll see uh, trips to Africa, hunting, like all sorts of crazy stuff uh, gets donated by makers themselves. And you donate to win. There you can see the the table there. So as you continue down, you'll you'll see these spectacular knives. You can donate to win any one of these given knives. Uh, they're starting off with those K bars, but going straight into the other stuff, custom knives. Oh, this is cool by that sheriff. Uh, knife donated by a sheriff. Here's one uh, by an author of a crime book. Uh, here's a big sour rifle with a hogue um i mean it's some really cool that last package that's a forty three hundred dollar value for a sig sour uh rifle a silencer and a, and a hogue knife and you're not gonna have to donate that much to win it so just go over there and check it out uh, obviously i'm not maybe i'm not explaining it as well i'm just kind of overwhelmed by all the cool stuff you stand to gain and uh, i got to see a lot of this stuff in person it's cool if you go to blade show in atlanta to have all the stuff out that you can win and you can actually check it out uh right there so spectacular uh organization who's really i mean we would be nowhere without them so thank you and uh, thank them by donating all right we'll be right back with the state of the collection in one moment but before we do i just want to remind you the, the best way to help the show period is to share it send it to a friend uh hey uh, check this guy out he's man he speaks wisdom through the medium of knives and they'll be amazed. And then, uh, and then you can also download it on your favorite podcast app here. Listen on the go. Now we can't always be tied to a screen, but we can always have an earbud jammed in our ear. So that's what you're going to want to want to do there. All right. Coming up next is the state of the collection. Adventure delivered your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor survival EDC and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash BattleBox. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. This just came yesterday. That was operator error, by the way. This beautiful knife is the Benny. This is the new Jack Wolf knife. This is the, the July 2024 release, and it is a stunner. Um, every once in a while, uh, ben will reach out to me and and kind of give me a preview of what's to come and ask which cover I want it in. I think he uh, I think he's very well. We we know he's very generous, uh, but I also think it's very nice that he sometimes asks um, and I'm sure he has sort of a rotating. He must he must rotate around and because some covers are going to be more popular. I saw this and I was knocked out. That's called Mars Valley carbon fiber. How cool is that? Um Ordinarily, you know me, I, I, I get the more subdued carbon fibers or the micartas or the titaniums, but these fancy garish um, carbon fibers I normally don't get. And here I was just, I just wanted that. It's so beautiful. Uh, but anyway, okay, what do we have here? This is the folding locking bolster lock version of the Benny's clip, uh, Ben Belkin's version of the Lanny's clip, a very famous pattern. Um, developed by tony bows um the lanny's clip or i should say the benny's clip um it features the one non full height hollow ground blade in the jack wolf knives lineup so you see a saber ground but hollow ground 
uh, blade here. Downward angled, almost a recurved edge. And oh, that is still sharp. And then a nice belly there with the uh, upswept tip. That recurve allows you to sharpen through the, the front portion of this knife and still have a, a well-shaped clip point blade over time. So that is the, that's the Benny's clip. And you can see it's, it's a little bit shorter than the Benny. Now the Benny has a 3.25 inch blade. So right there in that uh, perfect EDC range and it's got dreamy action. So a really nice action there. And a cool thing about a bolster lock is that you can open it up lefty without worrying about where this thumb hits. I'm, I'm, my left is not so good at, at spidey flicking or at front flipping, but this is also a front flipper. Um, I love the size of this. To me, this knife, the first thing I did when I got this knife out after looking at it with the um, with the Benny's, uh, Benny's clip here, which by the way, I dyed that maroon. That was uh, originally a black micarta. First thing I did was pull this out. To me, er, it looks... Uh, it. it it has more of a, I guess, a 112 feel, but it has a classic pocket knife feel that just made me think of the 110, like right away. And it's got a broad handle and it's big. This one feels big. I got to say, I love it. This is the same length and size as both the Midnight Jack and the Sharpshooter Jack, but it feels, it feels to me substantially larger than both, especially the Midnight. Um, I'm sorry, the after hours, the after hours. Uh, you got a clip there, titanium clip, and then it also has a filler tab, comes with a filler tab, just in case you want to put this in a pocket slip. Does not come with a pocket slip because this does not fit their standard uh, leather slip. Look at that, how beautiful. And then dark blasted titanium bolsters and the machine satin blade. As much as I like, say, the um, the stone wash or the hand rub blades, I, I am a sucker for these uh, machine satins. Look at look at how it looks when you when you move it in the light. The chatoyance across the curve is just beautiful. I'm not sure if I use that word correctly, but I like saying chatoyance, just like I like saying Sheboygan. I'm going to close these both up because, well, we're done. But I love this thing. And I'm going to be carrying this a lot this summer. Uh, that's a cool thing about, by the way, about the folding um, locking versions of the Jack Wolf knives. At 3.25 inches, they're big enough to carry to to front right pocket carry and feel like you've got uh, enough knife on you. I mean, all right, we'll just stop that right there. Okay, next up, this one came a uh, same day, so this was cool uh, to get two knives in one day. But this one I ordered for my wife. A, a little while ago, and it just came in, and I'm very excited about this. This is a Steve Kalari Customs uh, chef knife for my wife and, by extension, my my daughters. And the reason I say that is because they don't like patina. My wife does not like the look of patina on on uh, high carbon steel, and and the uh, the other Steve Kalari Custom knives I have, uh, one is a longer chef's knife, the other is a paring knife. It's eighty seven sixty. Uh, high carbon steel, right? 8760. Like you get it pops. It's a really, really great steel, uh, but it does patina. And that's part of the charm as far as I'm concerned. Uh, not as far as my wife is concerned. So I, I ordered this from Steve in, I believe it's AEBL. And I said, you know, I want some, this is a, an antique micarta. I knew I wanted some sort of nice micarta, but I said, give it a girly flourish. And so uh, you can see the liners here are black and lavender, and it's really nice. I love the the lavender next to this ochre color of the uh, of this old micarta. I'm not sure where that micarta comes from, uh, like if it's a uh, Westinghouse or anything like that. But so he uh, he makes the knife that is my daily driver, like the knife that I cut use every single day. The two knives that I use every single day to cut and prepare food for this family he makes. And um, I got to say, I love those knives. But this, just looking at it, is a, a real improvement over the blade I got a year and a half ago, which it should be. But it's amazing to see. Like, this is like, 
so beautifully ground. Uh, you can see the grind lines on the blade there, and it's stunning. Very, very thin. That's the thing I love about these Steve Kalari Customs is that you can use them uh, when they're dull, and they cut like a dream when they're dull. So go check him out, uh, SCC or Steve Kalari Customs on Instagram. That's probably the best way to reach him. And and uh, the knives, uh, he also sells to a couple of retailers. They are um, they're not inexpensive, but compared to most custom chef's knives, I mean, they are reasonable. He is a man who uh, worked as a chef for many years and knows that a good knife is essential in a kitchen, uh, but also knows that chef's don't make a million bucks a year. At least most of them don't. So uh, this is a good way to get behind a really, really excellent custom fixed blade. All right. Here's a, a quick rundown of 10 really cool knives, production knives that I should carry more often. Uh, I stipulate production knives because I have some custom knives I really should carry more often. Uh, this is coming out of a place of guilt. It's coming out of a place of uh, uh, abundance that uh, isn't totally earned. A lot of these have been given to me, um, and, uh, and that is appreciated. Believe me, I love that. Uh, but some of them have been purchased, like in this list, and just not carried as much as I, I should. But they're so damn cool. Uh, I got to change that. Okay, first one is from Off Grid Knives. And... Uh, it's the Cayman XL. This was the knife I was clamoring for uh, for a year after getting the off-grid Cayman, a, 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 an EDC blade, an EDC knife of this exact profile, except just scaled down with a 3.25 inch blade. This is a four inch blade. I love that crazy extreme looking. And now that and now that I know, it reminds me of a. Uh, confederate style bowie with that with the nearly straight edge and then the belly towards the towards the tip the tip down low and a long you know, dramatic swedge down i'm not saying all confederate uh buoys looked like that but in doing research of a knife my brother gave me that looks kind of like this uh, that's what i discovered so uh the benefits of this are that low point you can do all sorts of utility uh kind of tip work with the point here without having to without having to try and reach it like you would on an upswept Bowie that had a point like over here. Uh, so you get kind of some Warncliffe uh, out of this, uh, but with the tip and the thrusting, you get, uh, you know, you get the benefit of a clip point blade. Um, nice and big deep carry pocket clip and recessed screws, recessed pocket clip, jimping on the pommel, which is cool. Um, and 14 C 28 and all on this, incredibly oh my gosh here i'm going to go to the main camera so you can watch it drop you know just incredible action these things are built by uh either best tech i think this one was built by best tech from when i got this uh and now i know that um carrie orifice of off-grid knives does a lot of manufacturing uh in taiwan so i'm not sure which plant that was made in but uh when you get an off-grid knife it's a Man, they are solid. They're beautifully designed, very solid, and very well-made. Uh, well-made meaning great fit and finish, that kind of thing. All right, next up, Artisan keeps popping up uh, in today's conversation. Um, this one, I could not wait to come out. And then when it finally did, I jumped all over it, and then I barely carried it. Uh, this is the Artisan Accelerator, a collaboration with uh, Mike Snowdy, a Florida uh knife maker at least he used to be in florida and i know he he had a very popular when when custom knives were first getting popular like 12 years ago or something like that he had a big um i don't know he kind of hit real hard and people were really into him and then i think he went away and started doing other stuff leather work and religious stuff and then and then i think he came back <laughs> and he came back uh, swinging with this design it's just beautiful and it's big that's a four inch blade ar rpm 9 the proprietary artisan cutlery steel and this very nice almost cold steel cold steel-esque handle and by that i mean you you have this big finger guard that can double as a as a choil that's a very cold steel kind of thing you got the the finger uh, scoops for the forefinger and the pinky and then the I mean, just the whole thing kind of reminds me of a of the layout of a cold steel knife. 
but you've got that beautiful drop point blade with the harpoon. You usually don't hear me put those that combination of words together, but uh, this is all of that. Pretty much a continuous belly, but you have about an inch and a half here of straight. So a very practical design, a very tactical design, and I mean tactical like, I don't see soldiers carrying this, but I mean tactical like, uh, if you needed a self-defense folder and and everything was working out perfectly and you could use a self-defense folder, this would be a good one. Uh, and, th and it's a looker. To me, it's just a beauty. So I think that's why I got it originally, beauty and the size. Um, but now that I have it, I need to carry it more. Oh, by the way, sculpted titanium pocket clip. And there's Mr. Snowdy's uh, logo. It's a an S, a dollar sign. There we go. Very nice. Um, Artisan always uses really nice micarta, too, at least in my experience. Next up, I, I used to say, or I told... Uh, I told Andrew Demko when he was on the show uh, last, which was a long time ago, it was when the AD10 and the AD15 came out. I said, AD10 to wed, AD15 to bed, baby. It's such a sexy knife. And then I stopped carrying it. I carried the AD10 all the time. What does that say about me? Uh, but I just think that this is such a cool knife, the AD15 with the scorpion lock. And this, this, this is a Demko knife for which um, there are very few in existence. And I'm not talking about the cold steel version. I'm talking about the, uh, the custom versions because it wasn't such an old knife when it was picked up by cold steel and then made an exclusive design of cold steel. So those who have, uh, the custom 80 15s, I think Alex used to have one. Hopefully, hopefully he still has that. Uh, that's watch and cut channel. Go check him out. He's awesome. Um, those people are coveted, have coveted pieces. Uh, but I got to say, Andrew was extremely impressed with how Cold Steel put their AD 15s together. And now you can get an AD 15 in um, lesser steel. This is S35. Uh, you can get it in lesser handle materials like the injection mold uh, FRN. And that's an all black version. So that's what I'm trying to say. It's not lesser in terms of honestly, in terms of like what <laughs> quality, I mean, it is in terms of material costs, but if you get one of the scout versions, say of them, of the, uh, of the, uh, four, four max or one of the inexpensive versions of this or the 80, 10, they are still as stout and sturdy as the luxury models. Uh, but anyway, uh, this one is fidgety too. I don't know why I don't carry it. Uh, maybe I need to sand down under the, I think this, <laughs> this texture sometimes makes me feel like I'm going to shred my pants, but I'm kind of over all that. So this is one I definitely have to start carrying more. And wait, let me show you something again. If you need it in this grip, great pommel, great pommel on this. So an all around great working knife. This, when this came out, it was flat ground and the AD10 was hollow ground. Now they're both flat ground. I lucked out and got the hollow ground on the AD10. So there I go, bragging. All right, next up, this one is, I, I waited many, many years to have, in a way, 20 years to have this, uh, because I loved the Jim O. Young original design uh, called the Synergy. Well, this is the Synergy 4 uh, by Jim O. Young and Civivi. Uh, the, the original Synergy was an aluminum handled knife with some really cool anodizing and a Tonto blade like this and also an upswept uh, sort of, um, uh, not Syrian, what's the word I'm thinking of, guys? Uh, you know, upswept Persian blade. And I would only see them on the back of Tactical Knives magazine like in the early 2000s. And, uh, oh man one day I'd love to get my hands on one of those. And then that knife came and went and I forgot all about it for many, many years. And then we started making one with the Synergy 3, a titanium version with the three inch blade. And then Civivi picked up, picked up the design with this uh, long form version, you know, four inch Tonto, four inch upswept. I love them both, but I'm really glad I got the Tonto. This Tonto, by the way, has a nice belly a flat front, and then that tip is center line, so you never have to search for that tip. Uh, however, you have the blade indexed, you'll know where it is, and also you still get the benefit of that um, 
this right here, this sweep, uh, very thin, uh, the sweep of the main edge, very thin, um, flat ground blade. So a little bit more robust than a hollow, but very, very thin and slicey, like, like most civivis. And, uh, I'm not sure why I'm not carrying it. I know option option paralysis is probably a part of it, uh, but I do need to start carrying this more. A uh, great in hand. I mean, it looks cool with those concentric radiating circles coming from the pivot, but those also give incredible grip, incredible grip, um, but not not so incredible that it it uh, hassles the hand in any way. Beautiful design. So glad they came up with this, and reminded me how much I liked it. All right, next up, last of the folding variety here. And I guess it's not a surprise I don't carry it, but I really thought I would. And that's the Lucha by Kershaw. The Kershaw Lucha in this traditional format uh, valley song. And by traditional format, I mean what has a, a four and three uh, fifths. I'm sorry. A four and three quarters inch blade, nice long, slender blade, uh, beautiful titanium handles, nice and light. Works great, has this awesome spring here, uh, spring tension, I should say, on the lock that works great. It doesn't have a complicated uh, mechanism and it doesn't need one. And for me, here, I'm going to go to the main camera. For me, uh, I like butterfly knives, not, not for all the aerobatics and tricks that very talented uh, guys can, can do all that crazy stuff. That's not what I'm about with the butterfly knife. For me, it's, it's a defensive weapon, um, and it should be opened quickly and deftly and uh, deftly and then used for cutting and maybe fighting or whatever. Uh, I get it. I get why people like all the aerobatics, and that's a whole thing, and, and I appreciate that. But for me, uh, open it quickly and use it. And you can – now, would I – no, I don't think so. I think it would fumble, fall out of my head. I have been opening these things up for 45 years. I should probably be all right at it in a pinch. But, you know, it, there's a lot of moving parts. And and in a defensive situation, uh, th that might be tricky. I don't go into I don't. That doesn't happen to me. I don't have to worry about that. But even for everyday cutting, it's just like a little flashy. Plus, it doesn't have a clip. So it's a big clipless knife that you have in your pocket. Sometimes the size has worked to my benefit uh, if it's next to my phone and everything is standing up straight, but then that's just too much. So it's not a surprise. I don't carry it that much, but um, I, I want to start carrying it because A, it's a USA made Kershaw and I love USA made Kershaws and it's just a beautiful blade. Look at that clip point with a weird swedge. I don't need much more. I mean, I don't need a uh, more than this in a bug butterfly knife next time what i need is much less than this um i saw fred perrin he had a handmade homemade uh bally song that was about this little and he you know i was talking with him and zach wingard that was a trip and he just whoosh, opened it up very very subtly down by his his uh down just had, with his hands hanging down and then he had a little pick uh knife in his hand it was awesome so yeah more butterfly knives in my life, I think, is is the order of the day. All right, next up, this was the first fixed blade knife that I really carried uh, devotedly for for quite some time, uh, and this is after I I put my own knives that I made myself kind of stopped carrying them, uh, and this is the felony stop by Tops Knives. Now I haven't carried this in ages, but just looking at it and re-examining it, it's perfect, and I think maybe. This knife helped me dictate my uh, my helped me figure out what is a great fixed blade knife to carry. And we're seeing the short handle and the rounded curved handle. And that short rounded curved handle is great if you carry in the waistband and this knife is pressed up against your body. And if you have muffin top, you know, like fifty two year old dads do, uh, you you might not have just like the the, the perfect V shape. So you need something that's not going to jam into that extra material you're packing there. And these sort of rounded handles like this or the Nova 2 uh, really feel good. Feel good to have on. You can see, you can see how uh, this knife, this is 
with the micarta this is the part that's always in the sheath and then this is the dark part towards the end is against my skin uh, and this is facing outward uh, this i'm definitely going to start carrying again however not such a great summer carry because it is um through uh it is what do you call it 1095 blade steel so the edge definitely does rust you can if you pay attention you just take it out strop it up and get that rust off of there and and you're good to go and just kind of maintain it on a daily basis but look at this you get a lot of punch out of this little knife next up is from civivi and Terzuola, Bob Terzuola. This is the Tomashi E, and uh, another another great great Civivi. I love this one. Um, they've made a lot of cool um, fixed blade knives. That one from Tough Knives is so cool. But this is the only one I got to say that that has inspired me to ownership. And uh, you may remember this was actually given to me, but I was I was about to buy it anyway. This was given to me by Civivi. Um, great micarta handle enclosing the full tang of this knife and it's it's a perfect handle to cap uh, with the thumb beautiful blade of what is this 14c i believe oh no this is nitro v and that beautiful upswept quaken japanese self-defense in the sleeve style blade i love it i love it the, the handle everything about this is gorgeous uh, i would love to have a real uh a, a, a custom bob terzuola but that's not uh that's not in the cards right now so this will have to do until then uh handle is a little long for my uh edcing uh but i have carried it a couple of times really only in that three o'clock position um but the smooth and the contour, the smoothness and the contouring of the micarta make this easy. Of, again, great sheath. Wouldn't even consider it without a great sheath. I'm going to swap out this cheesy clip uh, for a discreet carry right quick. All right, next up, here's a knife I don't carry enough because of the sheath. The sheath is about the size of Connecticut, and it's a little too much. But what a great blade. It's such a contrast because this blade is so slim with that slim handle. And the perfectly length handle. It's a nice short handle, allows you to really get your thumb up on the blade and still have most of the handle covered up. So, in case you're actually in a scrape, you don't have extra material here uh, with which to rest your knife. This is a CTS BD1N steel, and it is deeply hollow ground like all the others in the Yojimbo Yojumbo family, except for the a micro jimbo which is full flat ground a little small for that for that deep hollow grind um but th this is a this is a, a case of not carrying this not because of the knife the knife is perfect for what it is perfect but it's this sheath oh my god what a dog what a dog i mean this is fine with pajamas around the house or this is fine in running pants around the house or or shorts or whatever but look it's like twice the width if not more of the knife itself it is just huge so uh, i'm moaning and complaining but i've never made myself a uh, a sheath so i do have to make a custom sheath for this and i know when i do i will carry this thing way more often all right second to last on this list is the coban from cold steel uh a classic i waited this is another one i waited a ridiculous uh, 20 some odd years to get um, I got one for my sister when she had some creepy dude hanging around, and uh, it it made her feel secure. So it always made me feel good knowing she had a cold steel tanto next to the bed, because that's what I've had, and not this one, but the the master for years. Deep hollow grind on this Os Eight blade, very very thin Coke bottle handle with the uh, with the gription. You know, this is that uh, textured rubberized grivery. And I love this though. Cold Steel is not cheap or shy about contouring handles. Uh, so you look at it from this angle, the regular frontal angle, and it looks like a stick, like a very um, neutral shape. But then you turn it this way and you see the palm swell and it feels so good in hand. It's so light, it's so thin, it's so capable, it even comes in a serrated model, has a great sheath. Why don't I carry it? I think. I think it's this. 
I think it's the grippy rubber on the somewhat long handle. Now, again, if I if you've got a shirt over this and it's in the waistband, all of these factors are going to be an annoyance because uh, your shirt is going to grab on the rubbery material. Uh, it's a little long and straight, and it's going to rub. It's going to poke. It's going to grab. Uh, so this is better on the outside of the clothes. So I think if I could uh, rig this up in a way where I'm carrying it uh, on my uh, horizontally on the front, I think this this could be uh, a real winner. But in the meantime, it has a valuable uh, position in the stable. All right, this last one here might get more carry as the weather gets cold. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, and it's because it's on this Bastinelli shoulder rig. Uh, Bastinelli knives, awesome. Oh, man, I got a little scratch on my leather. Anyway, uh, awesome knife designer and, and a great... A uh, user of a uh, practitioner of the martial arts with knives. And uh, he came up with this really cool rig that just like a shoulder holster, but pretty simple, um, goes around both shoulders and then drops down. And then here's this uh, plate of leather with all the holes in it. And you can attach uh, knives to it. I, the one that I found makes the most sense for me is this sear model from station nine. Um, this beautiful, beautiful clip point blade here. That's a D2 blade steel, full, uh, nearly full height, flat grind, and then this incredible swedge. This knife makes for a great overall like survival knife because you could use this in, in so many different ways. It would make an excellent outdoor field knife. That's really how they're marketing it. <clears throat> but as a thruster, as a stabber, and as a slasher, this thing is amazing. Uh, I remember the day I got this. I got it with its brother, the Partisan, the, the one that looks like a chef's knife, and it looks a lot more uh, stabby, if you will. And I tested them both in the cardboard box that they came on, very informal test, and this sailed through to the hilt. I was so shocked at how easily this knife penetrated. So not just a great survival knife, but it would be a great uh, tactical in a pinch kind of knife. Uh, I, of course, put the Ranger Bands on there to increase the grip of this Somewhat smooth, but nicely contoured G10. So as the weather picks up, uh, who knows? I might be walking around with a shoulder holstered uh, sear under my under my jacket. How, how dorky, but how cool would that be? You answer, you tell me. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me on this edition of the Knife Junkie podcast and 10 cool production knives I do need to carry more often. If you want to watch more shows like this, go to thenifejunkie.com and and watch them there, or you can go to YouTube, where, where you might be right now, and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel, and also your favorite podcast app. Even if you don't listen there, subscribe there. It doesn't hurt you, and it helps me. And if something like that is interesting to you, this is how you can do it right there. All right, for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast